Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the first Dickens versus Tolstoy debate of 2022. I can't believe we are starting off a whole new year and that we are one year through. I feel like it's gone so fast, but we have much more reading to do and debating to do in the future, which we're both very excited about. Um, today's debate, we are going to be going over back to early Tolstoy with the Sevastopol stories and the raid, which Emma and I have these two editions, um, but they this, these are just like different collections. So yes, very excited. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Aww. We hope you are having a great year so far as well. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh. All right, so we are going to be structuring the debate like we always do. So if you are new here, we always structure it with the beginning talking about our unbiased opinions and our ratings. And then we go more into a structured debate where we go back and forth and we start off with the background on the book and the synopsis, how the author's life and experience relate to the book, writing, character, plot, intent, and then we finish it with our favorite quotes. So we are very excited. Um, and yes, do you have anything to say, Emma? <laughs> Uh, no, hi. How are you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, if you have thoughts too, we'd love to hear them. Yes, um, definitely tell us your rating, what you thought. We would love to know. Hello. So do you want to start with your unbiased thoughts and rating? Yes. Okay. So I'll just, I feel like I'll talk about them together because in my mind, they're almost like smushed together I don't know if it's kind of like that for you but when I try to remember specifically the raid mm -hmm. I'm like oh the raid is just in Sevastopol yes um, yes and for me it's really confusing to try and think of them as separate maybe that's because I read them one right after the other but mm -hmm. I didn't love them I didn't hate them I like them more than resurrection so that's, that's good. good progress <laughs> um but I also felt like both of them were quite similar and yeah. the issues I had with one ended up being the issues I had with the other. So I gave both of them three stars, but it's definitely a lower three star, I would say. Um, and I think these are really good examples because they do highlight what I don't like with Tolstoy overall, like captures uh, the main issues I have with Tolstoy's writing and stuff. But um, in the end, what I've read them, what I've continued reading them, if it weren't for the book club, I, I don't think so. They didn't really give me too much. I wasn't mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I love this, wasn't in love with the writing, wasn't enamored with them, uh, was just overall whelmed, you know, wasn't overwhelmed, was just whelmed. <laughs> you were just whelmed. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay, okay, I'm seeing some ratings. Some yes, three we're seeing, yes, let's see. We have three stars, <laughs> three stars. Um, let's see. Uh, I gave 3.5. Um, two stars, four stars. Oh, we have a five star for the raid. Okay. Okay. okay very interesting. I really want to hear your thoughts because we have not spoken. Yes. Yes. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we have another three star. Let's see. 3.5. Three, three seems to be the overall consensus. Oh, 4.5. Four. Okay. Cool. Cool. Good. Good. Cool. Yes. Um, so ooh, we have a five star. Here we go. <laughs> what are you smiling at? What? <laughs> I always feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, all right. My my opinion, my thoughts. Yes. I give both four stars. Um, because they weren't my favorite that I've ever read from Tolstoy, but I really got so much out of them and I'm a huge fan of like war stories and how like the concept of battle affects people emotionally and and their the way that they view certain situations. I just find these topics really interesting. So I loved delving into that. And I also loved returning back to young Tolstoy because I feel like yeah. going from resurrection, which was his latest to going back to his early, like these are his first stories. And I found it so beautiful to experience 
I because I think I'm pretty sure that he wrote these before Childhood Boyhood Youth even, um, or maybe in between because I think he wrote Childhood first. But anyway, I really loved seeing him, and I felt like he was just. I have so I I just have a lot to say, but anyway, I, I loved it. Um, but was it my favorite Tolstoy? Not really. Um, so yes, that's those are my opinions. Let's see, we have five star substop before the raid. The first sketch is five stars. Yeah, okay, I'll agree with that. I think Sevastopol, the first one, especially, yeah. it's the one set in second person, right? Yes. Um, I love like, oh, Tolstoy. Yeah. Yeah. Second person Tolstoy. <laughs> uh, hello. What about the stuff? <laughs> that, one's my favorite. that one's my favorite for sure. So, yeah. yeah. 6.7 stars. <laughs> Coming up with your own rating, I love it. <laughs> Let's see. Even though I gave the stories three stars, I still loved reading them until Stay Never Fails to Disappoint. Agreed. Agreed. Let's see. What did Lucy say? I like Sevastopol stories because it showed um, how war victimizes and how war was victimized and corrupt. And he didn't. But the raid felt too short to be. That's yeah. true. I do feel like I read the I read the raid first. And to be honest, me too. I kind of forgot like certain aspects of it because I do feel like it was quite similar and the themes that he was exploring in both overlapped a lot. So um, yeah, I do understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, I love Silver Sobo, but definitely wasn't my favorite Tolstoy. Yeah, that's pretty much how I feel too. Um, I gave the rate five stars because it reminded me of War and Peace. Exactly. I don't know if you felt that way too, Emma, Absolutely. but that's- yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just War and Peace. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Peace. yeah. And I love how we can sort of see that already, even before he started writing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, <laughs> he wrote these stories before deciding he was going to be a writer, which is amazing. Yeah. And I believe that the first sketch um, had a great um, impact on the literary scene in Russia and that the, the czar loved it because it was more of him sort of like honoring the the bravery of the Russian military and and fighting for their country and showing a lot of patriotism. So I feel like um, in in the first sketch it was you know he got great feedback and then I think I read and watched this uh, video and I was reading a little bit about the Sevastopol stories and um, the the second story the second sketch yeah. got a, a very different. Um, response because it was more him talking about the brutality and then unnecessary aspects of war and how yeah. it doesn't really serve much of a purpose and there's there's another scene that I do want to talk about but we can get more into that later um oh Dostoevsky is better mm, start another debate started <laughs> let's see um Yes, I liked it because it shows the brutality of war and it's not always as simple as one side is good and one side is bad. Definitely. That's something that I always find fascinating why I love war stories as well is because like who who is in the wrong? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, second person threw you off. I really loved the second person. I did like it, yeah. I think it was really effective. And I was, I was sad when it went away, honestly. I know, yeah. I thought it was so strong. Yeah, I was interested in how he decided to change point of views. And I felt, I felt like every sketch, like each of the three sketches did have a very different feeling, even though they were kind of talking about the same topics, which I felt was re really refreshing. Yeah, Oops. yeah, yeah. Um, hey, that's amazing. I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> Okay. Um, the captain in the raid acts as the mouthpiece of Tolstoy. The man who behaves as he ought to is brave, as opposed to the foolhardy romantic in sign who soon forfeits his life through recklessness. That's something that I don't know, Emma, if you saw this a lot, but he kept using the terms of describing people as brave and as acting like cowards. And I felt like that's always such a strong point in like war stories is what makes a person brave and what makes a person a coward and if you are trying to look out for your own 
uh, survival, does that make you a coward or does that make you brave? And I, I found that really interesting because I always felt like he kept returning back to that concept. Yeah, yeah. And in the, the raid too, a little, well, mm -hmm. a little bit, but yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, I had some problems with that actually, but I won't say too much. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Well, um, I mean, okay, well, let's talk about um, the background in the book and the synopsis. I feel like we were already talking about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, so basically the raid in the Sevastopol stories, as is all of his work, is heavily based on his own experience. And he actually went to um, Sevastopol and, and he experienced it and in the Crimean War. And I think because what he saw was so horrifying to him that he wanted to bring attention to it. And and he, like we were saying, he was dabbling in, in writing and even before he knew that he wanted to pursue that as his career. Um, so obviously the background of the book and what it's about is his own experience. Yeah. Um, because I do feel like it has such a, um, it has such a tan tangible feeling to it. And it really does feel like you are experiencing it. It doesn't feel like fiction, even though he sort of wrote it as, well, it doesn't even, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Exactly. It didn't really feel like fiction at all. It felt like a first, uh, first-hand experience, and that's exactly what it was. Um, I remember this the scene in the Sevastopol stories when he's walking up the road. I think it was to the fourth bastion, and and he's talking about um, hearing all of the all of the bullets go by him and the cannons and everything. And he's saying that I was thinking about if I should keep going on the road or if I should walk into the trench that's going. Um, along the road to to protect himself and it's just like I felt like I was there with him and you're trying to make that decision of like what what to do in this incredible situation yeah um, okay you can feel the trauma definitely 100% um let's see See, I only the only Tolstoy I've read is Anna Karenina, which felt very different. So maybe I enjoyed them more because I didn't have other war themed Tolstoy to compare. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Ooh, we have another Anna Karenina reader. Amazing. Okay. Um, oh yes, the descriptions of the landscapes I felt were so beautiful. Definitely. Okay. Um all right, do you want to go right into writing? Do you have? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, what you dislike. <laughs> <laughs> um, we already talked about the raid being kind of a mini piece of War and Peace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it felt so much like that with the same metaphors. I even felt almost like I was reading some of the same sentences from yeah. War and Peace sometimes with the soldiers or the army um being described as water or flowing river and stuff like that and that's not a bad thing because i freaking loved war and peace um that was just really cool though to see that uh that he i feel like he just put the raid in war and peace sometimes mm -hmm. um in some parts but that was actually cool i didn't mind that really but the writing i think now that we've read what have we read from tolstoy that are like his war pieces war and peace the raid sevastopol mm -hmm. Um, not the first direction. You like in some parts, it kind of gave me that feel. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, like it's just very repetitive. We even talked about this with War and Peace, I think, during our live show for that one. But mm -hmm. it's so repetitive in so many different aspects. The sentences he's using, like even when I was reading Sevastopol, sometimes I would stop and I would be like, "Have I not read this exact same sentence before? I just read the sentence shuffled up a little bit." Mm -hmm. Um, and that is, I think that's one of his tactics, right? And War and Peace especially because he just stops and he's like, okay, now we're going to talk again about my philosophy and I'm yeah. going to tell you in a different way this time. Um, I didn't mind it too much in War and Peace, but I think now that it seems to be Tolstoy's broader thing, or at least in these stories too, I'm like, okay, you're mm -hmm. kind of done, please. Um, <laughs> But as well, the amount of times, even with the nature writing, I love seeing Tolstoy's nature writing back because I miss that so much from Resurrection. Mm -hmm. But that, as beautiful as it is, it's also 
extremely repetitive. Like at the end of the day, he'll always describe the same thing. In Sevastopol, we talk a lot about water and, and the grass and in the raid, it's like, oh, nature with against kind of the soldiers and that parallel. But I think like if I have to bring Dickens into it again with him, I feel like there's so much inventiveness in, is that Willow? Oh my God. It is, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Um, so much inventiveness in whatever he's writing about that it never feels as though you're reading the same thing over, whether that's nature or building or character description. But in Tolstoy, when he brings up um, the same things, I almost feel as though he's just wasting sometimes, yeah. um, which I didn't love. I don't know if you felt that way. Did you feel like that? Um, I, I know what you mean because I did okay. notice that, but I don't think it's something that really bothered me. Okay, okay. Um, because I think it's, I think it's because I love it so much that when I see it more and more, I'm just like, oh yes, like one of my favorite aspects of Tolstoy. Okay, you know, so very different reactions, yeah. Yeah, I just have a different view of it, I think. Um, because I do feel like Tolstoy is very fond of like repetition and creating gravity with the repetition. So mm -hmm. sort of like making emphasis for certain things. So I don't know if, like I would, I wonder if that's intentional of him describing certain things. You know what I mean? I think yeah. so. Yeah, especially in the raid. Yeah, like Lucy's saying, because it's only around twenty-eight pages. Yes, um, and it's always the same thing. Hammer, like it is intentional. It is supposed to be repetitive to, I think, bring home the point or whatever. But yeah, uh, I think it might even be stronger to just leave it as mm -hmm. that one impression or as that one description. Yeah. Um, so that's something I'm noticing more as an overarching thing with Tolstoy that I'm just like, I do not want to spend time, but we do have very different reactions to it. Even if I'm yeah. thinking, oh, I don't want to spend time reading the same thing over again. Like I get it, um, mm -hmm. for you, it's like a delight, which is really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Again, I feel like we always say in the debates, like it is so personal preference yeah, and exactly. that's what I find so interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, for me with the writing, talking about, Sevastopol in second person I really want to talk about yeah, yeah. because I just I that's something that we've never seen in Tolstoy so I thought that that was really interesting and I loved how it's he like completely brings you into the situation and it really feels like you're experiencing what he's talking about because yeah. he's putting you in his shoes and mm -hmm. sort of saying like, well, you would see this and, and you would do this and you would go here and you would go there. And this is basically what's happening around you. Um, yeah. Whereas I feel like he does that in War and Peace. When we enter War and Peace, we enter the drawing room and it sort of feels like he's taking us by the hand and introducing us to all the different characters. And I felt like that's how he was. He was sort of giving us a tour of Sevastopol and setting the scene and really bringing us along and making us part of the story. And I really valued that because it didn't feel like I was reading about people experiencing things and I was sort of a third party yeah, you know, exactly. outside of the situation. Yeah. It really felt like, oh, well, this, like, you are experiencing these things. Yeah, like it's me. Describing, um, which I felt like was, was a fantastic element. And I do wish that he continued on with it. Yes. Although I, I did find it really interesting how he switched um and and I guess like the different effects that like I just find it fascinating that that but that point of view can have such a great effect on you in that way mm -hmm. yes yeah. do you do you have I agree 100 percent. I was delighted when I started to yeah. and it was second person um yeah. so I'm picturing that, like what would a Dickens novel in second person feel like you yeah. know yeah like I would love to I would love to see that I would love to see a whole novel in second person from either one. Yeah, don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that'd be great. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it's definitely very hard to compare. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what makes such an interesting debate because it's, yeah. how, you know, and I think what else is interesting is how Tolstoy was greatly in influenced and inspired by Dickens, yet they have such different styles. And I think his one, his one, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? The one time that he tried to to mimic um, oh, yeah. t- uh, Dickens was childhood, I believe, wasn't yeah. it? Because yeah. he was trying to like mimic what Dickens did with David Copperfield, sort of like a fictionalized account of his own upbringing, but you know, changing quite a few things. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, and then let me just, I just want to check my notes in the book because I did put a little post-it. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree with this one too. I really like the first part of Sevastopol, but then my interest decreased so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I found it really hard to stay focused actually. Yeah. Um, and I think the, not the scrambliness, because that can be a compliment too, but um, the, the sketchiness of the sketches, <laughs> I'm trying to say. Um, I think in the second person, it worked really well because we were just kind of thrown all over mm-hmm. and it worked to create that effect of just being so overwhelmed, so um, scared, so displaced into a new environment. But then when we have the shift, and I, I don't think his writing is super strong yet. Obviously, he doesn't know he wants to be a writer yet. And it's his, one of his first things, right? But mm-hmm. um, I found it really hard to just kind of keep track of almost what was going on. I kept mm-hmm. being aware, where are we? Who are these characters? Mm-hmm. I honestly can't tell you <laughs> anyone's names. Or anything yeah. like that. And that's because I, I listened half to the audiobook and half read it. But mm-hmm. did you feel that way? Like, I just felt like... I did. I did feel that way to a point. Um, yeah. I think especially with the the second not no not so much the second I think the third sketch uh, of where we're following the two brothers I sort of felt like okay I was holding on to their experience so that was giving me an anchor in the story but at certain points I was a little I just felt a little um floating disconnected (laughs) yeah Yeah. slightly disconnected but I, I don't think I think that maybe that's, I don't know, really, because like I said, I didn't give it five stars and it wasn't like my favorite Tolstoy. So I I don't really know why it was just something, I think that might be part of it. Like yes. I just I didn't feel completely immersed in the, the third sketch. So like, you know, we're saying is that I had such a great love of the, the first sketch and the second sketch and then the third sketch I really did enjoy as well, but I did feel a little disconnected. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. The only characters I remember were the brothers, yeah. yeah. Me as well. Um, and then something else that I put... Uh, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, I was going to be like, what's in your book? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Um, so I said, I love how he um, respects and honors the men defending against the enemy, him. I like how he... Uh, how they... I think because this it's based off of reality and truth that... Um, they call the enemy him. I really like that because it's sort of personifying this this mass group and making it one person. And that's what I wanted to mention as well. Is at one point, um, I have it tabbed, but I have so many tabs that it's going to take me forever to find it. <laughs> but it's one point when he's talking about um, what's the difference with one um, mass group of men and another mass group of men than one man d- fighting against another man. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You know, remember that scene? I found that incredible because, and it's it's the same thing back to who is the enemy and who is not. Um, and also, like, like, is there a point of even fighting Yeah. For, for what they're fighting for? And I don't know, that's just... Yeah, I just I know. found that really incredible. Yeah. Um, and then I liked how he acknowledged the brutality and how he really brought that to the forefront because I think in certain war stories, not that they glamorize war, um, but I think it's so, we're so used to like, oh, you know, these men are so brave and they're fighting for what they believe in in their country and their land and, um, and that's what like, they're meant to do. It's their duty. But at the same time, Tolstoy is sort of questioning that. And I like that he questions that. Yeah. And yeah. I know that that had a very conflicting response to yeah. uh, society at the time. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then that's pretty much like the same thing. Um, 
Oh, I loved how he ended the first sketch. So I just want to read it out. Um, the stains of an old waltz that is beginning, that is being played by the regimental band on the boulevard come floating across the water, together with the booming of the guns from the bastions, which seems strangely to echo, to echo them. I felt like he just, he writes certain scenes, like I loved how it was floating across the water. And then you have like the booming guns and the drums and the echoes. And I think that certain words that he uses are so resonant and I don't know, mm. they just play so well in, in my head. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, his descriptions of the wounded and the dying, I was oh. just heartbroken. And I felt like you could really feel that it's so authentic and then that's really how things yeah. were, you know? There was such a, uh, oh, and then another part is when he talks about um, the hero of the story isn't one man, it is truth. I mm -hmm. love that. Like, mm -hmm. it, it reminded me a lot of, I don't know if people are going to yell at me for saying this, it reminded me a lot of Ernest Hemingway because I feel like he's always, you know, like trying to write very truthfully and that if he writes one true sentence, then that is a success. And I love that about Ernest Hemingway and the fact that Tolstoy said something similar, I really loved that as well. Mm -hmm. Because to a point, like that's the question that we're asking, like, is there a hero, is there an enemy? And then, but the only hero really is truth. And that's exactly what he's giving to us. It's just the truth of it. Ernest Hemingway, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna get yelled at? <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel about this? Um. Yes. You can, you can be honest. <laughs> well, it's a debate, of course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I yes, I agree to an extent. I also think some of what Tolst like the angle that he takes a lot. Yes, his hero is truth, but it's also sometimes I think too much of his truth, and I think his view sometimes it's just way too I don't know sometimes I think the nuance was missing a little bit from Sevastopol mm -hmm. and I think well I'm kind of getting into characters a little bit but a lot mm -hmm. of the people that I do remember they're not so much people as just impressions of the coward or mm -hmm. the soldier who um, is trying to be the hero and is obviously quite reckless and just being um, in search of glory but I think too with the truth thing a lot of it in in the raid actually mostly I was a lot of his lines were just so idealistic and unrealistic to me mm -hmm. um especially with the nature thing like I I think it was the quote that you loved a lot it was about nature um and the soldiers like coming into contact with yeah. nature that yeah. they would relinquish all violence or all evil from them yes. um what <laughs> no <laughs> No, that's beautiful. That's a very nice lofty thought, but it it doesn't make any sense. That's clearly not what's going to happen. That's clearly not what what's happening. Um, I don't know. It just, I don't know. Sometimes he just says things like he'll lead up this like amazing experience of war, his experience with war, how awful it is. And then he'll come in with a line that seems to be the savior or some thought that could do something to the situation, but it's just completely do you know? I don't know. Do you feel like that? Kind of, I'm just like, this is not going to happen. Don't, don't give me a reality that's not going to happen. Um, no, no I, I like that because yeah. that's, I didn't even think about that. I was just, no. yeah, no, I think that that's really interesting. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't even. I don't know if it's me being like, oh, beautiful Tolstoy and sort of like, you know, it going over my head, but I don't know. Because I do feel like, I, I get what you're saying where Tolstoy mm -hmm. can be kind of like, this is this is my truth and this should be your truth as well. Yeah, um, that's what I Sort of like persuading the reader. So, yeah. but I do feel like he was so passionate about these things that he wanted to share his own opinions. Yeah. So, you know, because I mean, granted, like when they were published and people read them, there were very differing opinions and yeah. a lot of people didn't agree with him. So, yeah. yeah, it's interesting to see, though, how he views those those aspects. Um, 
Oh, here's the quote. No, the hero of my story, whom I love with all my heart and soul, whom I attempt to portray in all his beauty, is now and will always be supremely magnificent the truth. I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. Emma disagrees. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Do you want to go into character now? Yeah, I don't have too much to say. Do you have something to say? I don't that? have too much to say either, so I'm interested to see what you think. Um, okay, the only kind of one, we already talked about how we didn't really have a kind of grasp on a lot of people, and that's not a bad thing, but um, sometimes I felt as though they were just boiled down so then Tolstoy could talk about the truth of what was happening with people being so inflated for war or fighting for the wrong reasons or just enjoying violence um, yeah. to gain glory and stuff. So sometimes when I would like be alongside the characters, they would just feel as though they were fulfilling that, like self-fulfilling prophecy that Tolstoy was writing about. And these like people did exist like this. And um, I think during the period, this was such uh, a thing that was happening and is still happening. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of the times I were, I did just feel like they were boiled down to one impression um, Yes, that Tolstoy was. But sort of like we are just following him. like. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people who were cowards or the enzymes who were being so reckless and trying to um, heighten themselves in the army and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of miss the characters from there, but I think these sketches were, I wouldn't say he was doing it on a purpose, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, more plot driven. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do find that interesting because when we think to childhood and what else we've read from him, it's mainly yeah. character driven. Um, yeah, this was interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And I do feel like because this was based so heavily on his own experiences, that maybe he was, he and Truth were the characters that he was trying to yeah. portray. Yeah. That's nice. yeah. yeah. Um, are these stories a good starting place for Tolstoy? Yes and no. I kind of feel like it depends on. Mm, I think if I read these first, I would yeah. be kind of like, uh, yeah. I, know. I think yeah. you should I think you should start with like on a current enough. Honestly, <laughs> that's what I tell everyone. And it's it's funny because like that's one of his, you know, epics and yeah, I feel like it is a daunting place to start, but I think you get everything from him in there. Um, yeah. But the first tall stories that I read yeah. were the two short stories, How Much Land Does a Man Need and What Men Live By? And they're in the Bind Up a, a Little Black Classic. I forgot what number it is. But mm -hmm. um, that's the first tall story I read because I wanted to read Anna Karenina, but I was nervous and I didn't know how I would feel about it. And I didn't want to like dedicate so much time to Anna Karenina because I didn't know how I would feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved, absolutely loved those two short stories. So I do think that those two short stories are a great place to start. Um, although I haven't read them in like two years now. Um, yeah. The Cossacks is a good place to start. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Anna Karenina and War Peace are much better, but it also depends on your taste. 100% depends on your taste, your mood, what kind of story you are looking for. I'd love to know how you guys all got into Tolstoy, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Invest the time and energy starting with Anna Karenina, 100%. Do it for Levin. That's, <laughs> that's what I would like say. <laughs> Do it for Levin and Steva. The Cossacks make a good start. Okay, interesting. If I read this as a 17 year old when I read Anna Karenina, I wouldn't have liked it to be honest. Yeah. The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Oh, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> Let's see. I read my first Tolstoy for this book club. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
um, Death of Ivan Ilyich. I'm excited to read it. I know so many people say how amazing it is and I can't wait. Yeah. Um, all right, do you wanna go into plot? I kind of feel like we've sort of been talking about these topics already, but yeah, do you yeah. have anything specific you wanna mention? Um. I think just Sevastopol just felt, I think I've already mentioned this, but just felt very difficult to keep my interest or keep motivated to keep reading, um, to have any sense of like cohesiveness or um, like with the characters, again, there wasn't a lot anchoring me there, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just gave me this floating mesh of war meditation feeling mm -hmm. that honestly didn't give me anything new, um, yeah. didn't provide me with anything that I felt like I wanted to take into my life or any wisdom. <gasps> oh my mm -hmm. God, Did uh, we totally forgot. Did, um, did you read any of the Calendar of Wisdom this month? No, so I don't have a copy yet. Okay, sorry. Just I've been meaning, no, it's okay, I've been meaning to get a copy. I know you haven't been loving it, right? Oh, well. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, it's optional, right? So yes, calendar wisdom, I'll just briefly mention it, but it's 365 days of Tolstoy. Uh, he did write it or he didn't write it. He collected it. It's his translation actually. Well, not actually because we're reading it in English, but you know what I mean? Um, and their spiritual sayings, wisdom, guidelines, stuff that he wants you to have as you're going throughout your day. So it's just a page a day, essentially. Um, and I finished January, which is good. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and it's I think I didn't really understand or take into account how uh like religious it is because actually most yeah. of them not most of them are Bible verses, but a lot of them are. Um and so it's just been interesting to see like it's such a cool insight into Tolstoy. I'm really glad actually we picked it as a reading experience. A lot of what he chooses to write down or include, I'm just like Hmm. Hmm. this is cool to see you do I want anything to do with a lot of your philosophy or religious insights not really um right. but I'm really glad we're reading it because I think it provides so much um like background and it's just really cool to see what it's just like oh it's just a great opportunity because your favorite one of your favorite authors or someone is writing yeah. on stuff that they're inspired by or that they believe or that they want mm -hmm. to share into the world yeah. which I don't think a lot of authors have something like this so it's really mm -hmm. it's really cool but I'm hating it <laughs> oh my gosh okay you know but that's okay I it's to, yeah. Things. <laughs> yeah I need to get a copy I keep meaning to and then I I don't so I'm interested to see the things that he does include though yeah does, do you think it reflects a lot of what he writes about uh in terms of like his religious spiritual views yes absolutely yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's interesting to read it, but mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, like the people are saying, what did you guys say? I don't agree with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been hating a calendar of wisdom. I'm enjoying a calendar of wisdom. Okay, cool. I didn't know if you guys were reading it or not. So that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, it has many vegetarian references. Interesting. Okay. Yes, I will. I will get it and I will quickly read through January and I'll let you know <laughs> what I do. Um, yeah sorry I don't even know what we were talking about I just remembered that. Um, um, what? the plot the disconnectedness I think yes okay but that's the thing like a lot of my whatever it's not that I hate Tolstoy I really love Tolstoy guys I really do like Tolstoy um, are you sure <laughs> yes. yes I'm sure War and Peace is my is half of my heart um I just didn't, I just don't like it. I just didn't like it. Okay, okay. I'm trying to think of something more academic or smarter to say about it other than that. Yeah. I don't like it. Okay. Um, yeah. What is it a personal like? preference thing or yeah, is it? Okay. Every, yeah, everything is, but yeah. Um, yeah. I can see parts that are personal preference, but some of the like more core issues, I would say. Mm. Um, 
Mm, no, it is just personal preference, but yeah. yeah. How do you think Dickens would respond to Tolstoy's writing? Because like, I we know that, that Tolstoy loved no. Dickens, but we don't know too much about, or at least no. I don't, too much about Dickens's own opinion regarding Tolstoy, which I feel like if there is, I would love to learn about. <laughs> I think he'd be like, where's your sense of humor? <laughs> Oh my god. That's so funny. Um I don't know because a lot where of the coffins, where are the talking chairs, yes. where's the person score? running up to the bowler hat? Yeah. <laughs> um honestly when Tolstoy I have we have seen Tolstoy crack a joke, I think. Yes. Um, we have. I can't we really have. remember it, but well, I know I mean, we I feel like Steva, he's always Oh Steva, amazing. Yes, you know, like I feel like Steve is the funniest character in Tolstoy that we've mm-hmm. experienced so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, but a lot of their books do tackle some oh very what they're both like reincarnations of Dickens and Tolstoy. Amazing. Oh Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just you can do do this. Here's my beard. <laughs> For me with plot, I really, I was really interested in how Mm -hmm. it was very plot driven and not very character driven because usually he's very strong in his um, character driven narratives. So I found that really interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, they're saying Andre was pretty sarcastic at times too. Yeah, yeah. Andre, I miss Andre. Please. I feel like we we need to do a reread of War and Peace, but you know, just Andre. Just yes, you need a just Andre copy too. (laughs) We'll see. We'll see. Um, Yes, you liked that it was plot driven. Yeah, did you guys? What do you guys feel about it? Did you like that it was plot driven, or do you prefer his character driven narratives? I'd love to know. Um, okay and then I do feel like intent we always talk about like the the author's intent we've kind of been talking about that the whole time he just wanted to uh bring awareness to like the brutality of what was going on in his own experience and sort of make people aware of that but I do find it really interesting how the Russian government and um, the czar, like their their views of it and how they were so, because like the censors at that time were so strong that I know a lot of Sevastopol stories was cut out. Uh, mm-hmm. And I do, yeah, and I, it was because he was, I don't know if this has, I didn't check if these editions have the pieces that were cut out or not, but I know that because he was sort of, showing the brutality of war and questioning why we even go to battle, that was obviously against their views. Um, and I know that a lot of it was cut out and so many so many literary figures were exiled and held at gunpoint and then exiled and just the, the things that they would do is just baffling to me. Yeah. Um, so to think like that's something that I always appreciate about Tolstoy and Dickens too, but I feel like Tolstoy, he was writing in a time and place that it was almost dangerous to do what he was doing. Well, it, it was dangerous to do what he was doing. And I feel like with Dickens, obviously it's a very different place that he's that he's writing from and the things that he's writing about. Um, so I don't know. I think that like circumstantially it's it's, it's different. Yeah, very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The edition I had, uh, I read, had the cutout parts in brackets, and we thought this needs to be completely different. That's so interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I definitely feel like in certain cases, you do feel the years in between yourself and 
Tolstoy's writing and his views, mm-hmm. which I mean, Dickens as well. We always, oh, we yeah. always talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> we always talk about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Oh, you like plot driven stories, character driven. Okay. And then do you have any, any favorite quotes? Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. <laughs> um, yes, okay, this one's from Sevastopol in May. Okay. Uh, it's like, oh, it's actually right at the end of that one. Um, and it's thousands of men are crowding together, studying one another, speaking to one another, smiling at one another. It might be supposed that when these men, Christians, recognizing the same great law of love, see what they have done, they will instantly fall to their knees in order to repent before him who, when he gave them life, placed in the soul of each, together with the fear of death, a love of the good and the beautiful, and that they will embrace one another with tears of joy and happiness, like brothers. Yes. Not a bit of it, not a bit of it. <laughs> the scraps of white cloth will be put away, and once again the engines of death and suffering will start their whistling. Once again the blood of the innocent will flow, and the air will be filled with their groans and cursing. hmm mm-hmm. yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, what a, what a way to explain what's going on. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, which one do I want to pick? I have a few. Sorry, I should have written this out prior. I'm like, oh, let me just. I think that might be the only one I have. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, what did you guys have? You understand that the feeling which makes them work is not a feeling of pettiness, ambition, forgetfulness, which you yourself have experienced, but a different sentiment, one more powerful in the moment is made of the men who live with their ordinary composure under the fire of cannon amid hundreds of chances of death. Amazing. Okay, sorry about your No, it's okay. Here's another one. You see oh. one with a beautiful orderly and gleaming formation with music and beating drums, but war in its authentic expression as blood, suffering, and death. Yes. Oh. So good. Um, okay, this one is from... Oh, wait, wait. It's the end of the second... Yes, the end of the second sketch where we're talking about um, the truth quote that I have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where mine was from, too. Um, let's see. Yes, okay, yes. <laughs> we have the same quotes. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> oh wait, what's this one? Okay, um this one is from the third sketch. <clears throat> and it says but let us quickly lower the curtain on this uh, deeply depressing scene. Tomorrow, perhaps even this very day, each one of these men will go proudly and cheerfully to his death and will die with calm and fortitude under these conditions, which appall even the most detached of sensibilities and are characterized by a total absence of the human and of any prospect of salvation. The only relief is that of oblivion, the annihilation of consciousness, Buried in each man's soul lies the noble spark that will make a hero of him. But this spark grows weary of burning brightly all the time. When the fateful moment arrives, however, it will leap up like a flame and illuminate great deeds. I just loved it. I just love Tolstoy. That's <laughs> me. Oh. Um, where is this tale is the evil shown that should be avoided? Where is the good that should be initiated? Who is the villain? Who is the hero of the story? All are good and all are bad. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. 
just incredible. I know there were so many moments that I was reading the book and I just, I always like write little notes in the margins and everything. And, and to a point, I just like didn't even know, like I, I knew I wanted to write something, but I didn't know what I wanted to write. So I would just put speechless because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but I love it. Um, let's see. But the one consolation of life in these conditions, the one consolation is forgiveness. The United Yes, yes. Um, oops, let's see. Um, the next book is in Dombian Sun, actually. Emma, Emma thought that it was no, the oh, no. It is actually oh, no. it is actually Barnaby Rudge. Yes, this is our next one. I have not read it yet. I started reading it. Have you? No, because I ordered it late because I ordered the wrong book. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Emma in her do you want to explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ordered I did order Dombey and Son because I thought for some reason it was Dombey and Son, but it's Barnaby Rudge. So it's still on the way. So yes. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. Uh, it happens to the best of us, Emma. <laughs> You started reading it, awesome. Do we have any thoughts already for the people that have started? I'm excited. It's about. I'm assuming it's about Barnaby Rudge. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, um, I do have some quotes for the raid. Oh, okay, nice, nice, nice. Um, just wanna. Oh, yeah. Can I share the one that I liked that you had thoughts on? Yes. Okay. Um, Nature seemed to breathe with pacifying beauty and power. Can it be that there is not enough space for man in this beautiful world under those immeasurable starry heavens? Is it possible that man's heart can harbor amid such ravishing natural beauty, feelings of hatred, vengeance, or the desire to destroy his fellows? All the evil in man, one would think, should disappear on contact with nature, the most spontaneous expression of beauty and goodness. Would one think? Would one think, though? Would one think? Mm. I think it depends on the one that is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to get some love back for Tolstoy. I really do. I want some book. I want, yeah. I want an experience like I had with War and Peace. I don't know where it's gone. Okay. Well, it might come back. I know that Haji Murat is a lot of people's okay. favorite. Yeah. I know yeah. that Death of Ivan Ilyich, a lot of people love. Um, the Cossacks, a lot of people love. So we will I'm excited. see. I'm excited. Um, I am excited as well. I'm excited for, for Dickens because we're getting, we're getting to his later works. And I'm like, yes. <sighs> Um, oh, I just oh, read it. Barnaby Rudge. Oh, uh -oh. oh worse Dickens. Okay, okay. We have some opinions. Dostoevsky versus Hemingway. Oh, I'm there for it. <laughs> I'm really liking Barnaby Rudge. That's awesome. Um, ooh, best one so far. There we go. Different opinions. Um, I'm about a hundred pages in and it's kind of strange. I'm not sure what I think about it yet. Okay. Cause I feel like out of all of his books, Barnaby Rudge is one of the, like Martin Chuzzlewit and Barnaby Rudge, I feel like aren't talking oh, yeah. very much. Yeah. Jane Austen versus Charlotte Bronte. These are amazing combinations. Um. Oh yes, the Tale of Two Cities. I'm so excited to read the Tale of Two Cities to see more like war in Dickens. Yeah, I feel like that would be really interesting because I don't think we've experienced that yet. Um, a lot of people say it's Dickens' worst book. Okay, how long is it? Is it's quite long? I don't know. Because we're taking two months. Yeah, I think it's around between six or seven am i right am i wrong i don't know. i think it's a hefty one um oh here we go i'm loving barnaby wrench the only dickens i've read is christmas calendar and the same ghosty vibes emma that's what that's what tolstoy's missing i don't know where are the ghosts he's missing a few yeah 
a few um coffin references. <laughs> 700, 700. Okay, 700 pages. 700, okay. Yeah, 700. It's on the longer side. Yeah, so we are taking two months for that, and then that will be on Emma's channel. Um, and we'll see who defends who because. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll we didn't even <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Yeah. We didn't even say whose team we were on for this debate. <laughs> didn't we? We didn't yeah, even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we, and we know. Um, oh, we have Spooky. I love to tell two cities. Um, there's a talking raven in it. <gasps> Fantastic. Edgar Allan Poe who? <laughs> Tolstoy's ghosts are real people. I like that. I like that. Um, ooh, some bits are absolutely hilarious. Amazing. Ooh, at the moment it's kind of boring in the way he writes women. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Fantastic. It's inspired. Wow. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Yay. Oh, I should put the poll up. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, yeah. You need to okay. vote. <laughs> Everyone needs to vote. Let's do that. I'm glad we, we like went back to original Tol Tolstoy though, because it was so cool seeing, um, like I think you can literally see in these War, War and Peace coming to creation a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. Really cool. Cause I think we've seen that a little bit with Dickens and his work. Um, yeah. But yeah. That was really nice. Okay. I just put the poll on my um, community tab on my, um, YouTube channel. So just make sure that you vote. You can also cast your votes in the comments so that we can see who everyone's favoring. Um, but yes, that's that's on my community tab. It's either there or um, or in your subscription boxes, but I don't know if that always works. Yeah, YouTube's been weird. I don't know. I think it should be though, but I, it's not in mine, so I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Did, did you vote, Emma? I did. Okay, I'm going to vote, too. Wait, can I vote? No, I can't vote on my own poll. <laughs> I'm going to vote on my own poll. <sighs> so I'm assuming you're voting for Dickens still. Oh, maybe I just won't say this here. <laughs> I'll keep it to myself. Um, yes, this time around, it would be Mr. Charles. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Do you know who won from the whole of last year? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Leo Tolstoy. Mr. Leo Tolstoy. <laughs> of course, the uh, the Count himself. <laughs> it did. It did. Um, like looking at all the old polls, it did start to even out a little bit, but definitely Tolstoy. Yeah. Okay. I did really like returning to to young yeah. Tolstoy. Yeah. And what's the what's the next Tolstoy after? I don't even remember. Um, I don't know. I can check. Um, oh, it is family happiness. Oh, okay. The Polikushka. Mm, okay. Yes, family I happiness. I've never heard of, so I'm interested. Family happiness and Polikushka. Okay, awesome. So those are the next tall stories. Oh, tall story for me so far for Lucy. Are we reading all of their works? We are reading all of their fiction works. Um, 
we're reading everything by Dickens, but we're not reading everything by Tolstoy because there are a few nonfiction works that we're not reading. He wrote some plays that we're not reading. I mean, we could always like work that stuff in if anyone was interested or read them on the side or mm -hmm. have like optional choices. Um, you guys are of course welcome to read anything that's not included, of course. Um, yeah, I wish we could reread War and Peace too. When are we reading Kurtzier Sonata? Um, I have the schedule right here. Oh, July. Oh, okay, great. July. Let's see. Team Tolstoy, Team Dickens. Tolstoy so far, so far, but it might change. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Oh, this is so fun. I can't believe it's been a whole year. I know. I know. I feel like January took five years. January to was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, we have another Dickens. Nice. Oh, Dickens? The Dickens might be in my cat. Um, I'm a Dostoevsky guy. There you go. <laughs> Who made the schedule? Um, we both made it. We both made it. Um, let's see. Aw. <laughs> mm. Thank you. So sweet. Always Team Tolstoy. Barnaby Reg will be my first Dickens. That's exciting. Oh. I'm really wondering how that's going to go. We'll see. Yes. We'll see. <laughs> oh Mary. Bye Mary. Mary. Thank you so much for watching. And very interesting. Ooh, there's 70 votes. Let's see. Ooh, Tolstoy is winning so far. We have 59% Tolstoy, 41% Dickens. Okay. And we will check back, of course. We usually give it like 24 hours. Um, but it'll be up there for forever. So if anyone wants to vote in the future. <laughs> Aww. Tolstoy for me. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that that is all for today's debate. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us, of course, and we hope to see you in the next debate where we talk about um, Dombey and Sun. Barnaby Rudge. Barnaby Rudge. Barnaby Rudge is first. Um, yes, which that will, like I said, be on Emma's channel. So very excited. Oh, love you, Lucy. <laughs> yes, so... Thank you guys so much again. Um, we love we love doing this, and so we're so happy that you come and join us. Hmm. All right. Okay. Have an amazing day or night. Yeah. Or have a fantastic February and March because we will yeah. see you probably the first weekend of April. Yeah. Probably. Wow, that's crazy. <gasps> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, ciao. Ciao, okay. ciao. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.